And our first speaker is Arun, co-author of Datatable, which is a very, very neat and extremely useful package. So please welcome Arun. Um, so there's a lot of uh, 
Um, so for and against for data table, and most of it has to do with the learning curve for data table. It is very powerful, but at the same time, it takes time for people to get used to it. So my intent with this talk is to uh, give an impression of uh, what data table is about and hopefully convince you that it's worth the syntax and the learning curve to, to read the features that it offers. So I want to uh, start, the first part of the talk is about the philosophy and how uh, data table, the idea of data table is to write concise and straightforward code and uh, at the same time be very fast and memory efficient. And the second part of the talk I want to quickly go through the features in data table, the current features, which is uh, quite, a, quite a bit of uh, parallel, parallelization and some new features. Okay, so let's start with the data table's philosophy. Or uh, So start with data frames. Data frames are two-dimensional data structures, so columnar data structures, and they have rows and columns. And you can subset rows by providing this expression in the first argument of the data table, the data frame, or you can select columns with the second argument of the data frame, and you can do both to get certain rows and whatever columns you want to select. And that's pretty much it. The, the part, this function basically allows you to do subset rows, whatever you want, and select the columns, what you, whatever you want. And I'd like to talk about three different problems or three different ways based our approaches certain data manipulation tasks with the feature set that data frame provides as such. So the, the first one is uh, a very simple, uh, very simple example. You have a data frame with four columns here. And the question is for code equals, uh, not equals A, B, D. So without the, the third column here, uh, sorry, third row here, you'd like to get the sum of uh, the column val A. So obviously this would sum to 1.9, and if you want to look at the data frame code from base alpha, this it would be you subset the rows and then you select the column and then wrap that expression with sum. Pretty pretty obvious, pretty simple. Now, if you want to do a grouped aggregate operation, which is uh, for code not equal to A B D, so the third row is still out of the picture, and you want to get the sum of val A and val B but for each I B. So the green ones have to be summed together, but for each val A and val B. So this is the result you would expect. And if you have to look at the code for base R, so this is one way of doing it, I think. So I use the formula interface for aggregate, and then you select the rows, or you, you get the subset, and then you bind the columns you want together, and use the formula interface and get the sum. And the third and the final operation I want to talk about is the simple update operation. So you have code equals ABD, so this is the row we want, and we want to update the column, uh, sorry, the, the, the column val A with NA. And for this, you do the expression uh, for selecting the rows, and the column goes uh, here, and then the NA becomes the assignment on the right hand side. So, the, there are quite a, quite a bit of questions uh, that I have here, which is mostly dependent on consistency. The first one is, uh, so how do you get the sum of both val A and val B with this expression? Or how do you get the sum of val A and val B combined? You'd probably loop through it and use as the data the frame or whatever it is, but it's not possible with the same way you do it, you'll have to repeat it twice. And here there's an aggregate, which is another function. You have a formula interface, and here we are subsetting all the columns where uh, ID column and code, so after this the code column is not necessary but we are still subsetting the column here. And how would you get the sum of val A and mean of val B using this expression? So there are quite a bit of questions. And here, the entire expression that you want to use is on the left side of the assignment operator, and the value to be assigned is on the right side of the operator. So when I was starting to use R, this is more or less the impression I had. I had to look at aggregate function probably a million times before I, I still don't get used to it. So. Then, when I looked at uh, data tables, there were three points that mattered to me, or the three major points, which is it was an enhanced data frame, so it had three major announcements. The first one is, allow column names to be seen as, as variables. What this means, we'll see in a moment. And because we allow the column names to be seen as variables, we can directly compute on the columns within the frame of a data table. We'll also see that in a moment. 
And the third one is uh, have an additional argument to the data frame syntax or the new data table syntax, which is add the argument by to it, or group by in SQL. So now if you look at data tables, with these three enhancements added, you have the same rows and columns, it's identical. With subsetting rows, uh, you don't have to do the x dollar here. That allows for cleanness syntax, and that's because the columns can be referred to as their variables. And in the, in the second argument, to select columns, you don't have to code them, because again, they are seen as variables. So you can just select the column by specifying the name. In addition to that, you can also compute on the columns in the second expression. So anything related to columns, anything related to operational columns, you just use the second expression. And if you want to do things together, then you just use the same way you do it in data frame, but with these enhanced features. And the final one is there is this kind of virtual third dimension that you provide by adding a group by statement, which allows you to split row wise depending on the unique values and then aggregate or do operations based on that. So with this, uh, the, the basic idea boils down to uh, the fact that you think in terms of the basic units, it's always you do some operations on the rows, and then on those rows you do some computations on the columns, and if necessary you're going to group by. So why not have those three uh, units and have placeholders for those units as i, j, and by, where the first argument is on which rows, and the second one is what to do, and the third one is group by what. So, if you were to now look at the equivalent uh, data table code compared to the base R syntax we just looked a couple of slides ago. So this becomes the first part where you subset the rows and the second part becomes computing on the columns. Here you have subsetting the rows again and on those columns you're going to compute these two depending on uh, grouped by ID. And the third one you have uh, selecting the rows where you want to update the data table and the data table introduces this uh, previously unused base R operator colon equals where you can provide the name of the column you want to update and the value you want to update by on the right hand side. So overall, if you look at the tree, there's always a green part which is the first one for rows and then you have the blue part which is for the columns and then you have this, I think it's orange or yellow, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, if you want to group by then you have that as a third argument. So when I looked at that, I, I really like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, his expressions. Uh, so when I looked at that, it really clicked for me as a, as a data table user. So then I started to work, uh, learn more about data table, and then I came across this, this uh, feature set or this uh, usage where I had two tables, and we have the same table as the first, uh, uh, what, the same data table which you have seen before, and you have data table B where you have same ID and code and some other column called mal. And the task is to, for each B dollar ID and code, one in ABD, you want to figure out the equivalent columns in uh, ID code in A, and then multiply the values where there's a match. So 1.5 should be multiplied by two, and these two rows uh, should be multiplied by 0.5. And in data, in data table, you can also subset a data table using another data table. So here again, we are just identifying the rows that we want to. Uh, uh, so the, identifying the rows where B matches with A by looking upon columns ID and code, and the, on that we are just updating this column. So once again, it's on which rows what to do. And once I came to know that this feature was available, this is more or less the, the place where I thought data table is. Uh, something that I need because I do a lot of these update operations based on many data tables and uh, this is something uh, both for performance as well as syntax was very useful. So now um, the next part of the talk I want to talk about a couple of new features and improvements we have made in uh, data table the recent version 1.9.7. Uh, the first one is uh, fwrite. This was uh, written by Matt Dole, the main author of uh, data table. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a parallel file writer, so you can see here for 10 million rows and four cores takes about two seconds as compared to write.csv, which is 63 seconds, and you have nine seconds, sorry, uh, yeah, well, on RAM disk it takes nine seconds compared to 749 seconds on a 32 core, uh, 26 gigabytes server. And uh, then there's also a, a parallel sort that was implemented recently, once again, by the main author of uh, the Airtable, Matt. Uh, this was also recently presented after the USAR conference. So you have, I think this is quite impressive, for 10 billion rows, 
uh, our 10 billion length vector with 76 uh, gigabyte in size with 32 cores takes 25 minutes to start normally it takes 48 seconds in using data tables. And the next one is uh, parallel row subsets. So uh, now we are able to extract the rows in parallel as well. It's not the most cache efficient operation, so you don't get a lot of speed up or the ones which you would expect for 16 threads, but still that's a significant performance improvement. Um, so this is also available from the, will be available from the next version of data table. And uh, the next one is uh, this function person between that was recently tweaked in data table I think is quite useful. So this basically takes a vector and then asks uh, for all the values that is greater than or equal to 2,000 and less than or equal to 20,000 and that will return a logical vector. And this was, uh, uh, it reduced from 15.7 seconds to 1.1 seconds with four threads and also uses less memory because we don't allow R to materialize unnecessarily logical vectors. And uh, another uh, final improvement uh, that I want to talk about is uh, using median, because median is usually a very time consuming operation and if you're doing that by groups, then it's quite um, time consuming. And you can see that in the older version of the data table, it took about 19.9 seconds, whereas currently it takes about 1.2 seconds. This is because of the internal optimizations that we do in uh, data table. And the final uh, feature that I want to talk about is, uh, uh, okay, I have to hurry up. Uh, is that in, in the in the two, da two data table operations that we saw before, we were looking for equi joins, as in we were looking for the values to be matching exactly. But suppose if you have to look up for the value 0 0.6, for example, by uh, matching an ID column, as well as the value of value between 0 0.1 and 0 0.9, then uh, this was not possible previously before. And now we also have conditional joins or conditional subsets in data table with which you can just use the same expression you just provide the expression that you want to look at for detecting the rows, and then you can just update by NFs. And uh, so in summary, data table allows for concise, straightforward code and is fast and memory efficient. And the things what we want to look forward is, of course, to do more, uh, invest more efforts on parallelization. And uh, one thing would I, which I would be really interested in doing is to implement file back data tables so that the in-memory limitation of data table goes away, and you can use the same syntax to uh, do operations at almost the same speed, even if the file were on disk. And finally, I'd like to just place a request for you to give the editing a try. And with that, thank you for your attention. I'll take some questions. Save that for the